It was spring in my sophomore year in college in 1968, and I was here in Laramie at Wyoming University. The word was in Laramie, because we're quite close to the Colorado-Wyoming border, it's about 50 miles, that if you knew the right folks, you could drive to Colorado where doctors might provide illegal abortions. I was in a relationship with a man I had essentially been with since seventh grade. I did not take the decision of what to do lightly. When it became evident that we were not going to get married, I started inquiring as to what, how, when, where. I had a sorority sister at the time who was from Colorado, and I took her aside and we had a conversation. She had just had a friend who was in Denver who was in the same situation I was. There was kind of a third party that I found out about this provider in Colorado. I called, and of course, the first thing, right up front, was that all procedures were to be paid in cash up front. If I recall right, it was like $575. Where does a college student find an extra $575 in 1968? It was my money, the young man's money, and money from some of our friends. There were very, very few people who knew about the predicament. In those days, it was considered really risky, and so you can count on one hand the people that I was telling. A friend offered to drive me to Denver, and the instructions were that I was to register at the hotel motel thing not far from this provider's office in northern Denver. Register there, and after the procedure, I was to go back and spend the evening in the motel and come back and see him in the morning. I went in the back door, and I remember just being scared to death. Absolutely scared to death because I didn't know what to expect. They were going to inject me with some sort of solution that would in a few hours result in a miscarriage, if you will. So I gave the money, I had the procedure, and my friend and I went back to the motel. A few hours into the evening, nothing was happening. Nothing. And I thought, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I've just handed this fellow $575 and maybe this whole thing was a hoax. I said to my friend, I want to go back to Laramie. I'm incredibly uncomfortable here. I'm scared to death. Let's just get back to Laramie. So we got the car, drove back to Laramie, and about the time we got to the outskirts of town, which means it's almost sunrise, I started having contractions that went through the entire day. The following night, without having passed a fetus, I got scared and thought, what in the world? So my friend drove me to the hospital, and I spent the next two days in the hospital. Fortunately, it was the end of the school year, so people were moving out of the sorority house. Lots of activity. Nobody really realized that I was gone for a couple of days. The physicians or the providers, the hospital kept pressuring me to tell them what had happened. They thought I had sought an abortion. One of the providers, he was a provider here for a long, long time, very well respected, he came to my bedside and said, Susie, if you don't pass the fetus here in the next few hours, we're going to have to have a surgical procedure. You know, you're there. What do you say? Luckily, I passed it. That was it. The follow-up on that is that I had a hefty bill at the hospital. I went to the hospital, worked out a payment plan with them, and I think I paid over like a year and a half. I eventually got it all paid off, but just the whole process was frightening. About four years later, I was working in Denver. I got on an elevator and there was the doctor who had performed the abortion. I remembered his face. I just, you know, punched to the next floor and got off the elevator. He was very scary. My take was that in a strange way, he got pleasure out of the fact that I was at his mercy. <laughs>